Now we're going to talk about equations and graphs of ellipses, the third conic section that we'll be discussing in our conic section work. Ellipses are those uh, kind of oblong shaped uh, uh, conic sections and uh, they come from angling the plane and intersecting the cone and it gives you this oval shape. So the geometric definition relies on a cone and a plane intersecting and then the algebraic definition is a set of points in the plane such that the sum of the distances from two fixed points called foci remains constant. So let's take a look at ellipses. So from each point in the plane the sum of the distances to the foci is a constant. We call that constant C. So there's one focus, there's a second focus, and any point on the surface of the ellipse, for instance here is point A. If we add distance 1 and distance 2 we're going to get this real number value C. But if we get a separate point, here we'll put point B at another point on the surface of the ellipse, and we add the two distances from each foci together, that also will equal the same constant C. And if that's the case all the way around the surface of that ellipse, that is the algebraic definition for an ellipse. So each ellipse will have a center point. It will have two foci. The ellipse will have a major axis. The major axis occurs along the longest stretch of your ellipse, and that doesn't necessarily always mean it's horizontal. We can have a major axis that's vertical, if that's the longest side of the ellipse. And then the shortest side, the shortest distance between the two sides of the ellipse, is called the minor axis. Again, here it's shown to be a vertical minor axis, but it could also be a horizontal minor axis. So all of these things play an important part in graphing and in writing the equation for any ellipse. We need to know the center, we need to know the foci, we need to know the minor and major axes, and the distance between the center point and the foci. So in an ellipse, both variables are squared, where that was the case also in a circle, but wasn't the case in the parabolas, we're back to where both variables are squared in an ellipse. The general equation for any ellipse looks like this. Now what's different between the equation of an ellipse and the equation of a circle are these fractions here, these denominators. There's going to be a real number value below each variable, and that is what makes a, an ellipse instead of a circle. Also, one uh, big thing that we notice that's different between an ellipse and a circle is an ellipse is always set equal to 1, where a circle is set equal to its radius squared. So in an ellipse, we're always going to solve it and make sure that we set it equal to 1. And this is another big important point, is that it is the sum of those two variables squared. So we're looking for a plus sign in between the two fractions, and we're looking for them set equal to 1. So there's the general equation for any ellipse. Uh, the center, again, is hk. That's not new for us. The x-coordinate is h. The y-coordinate is k for the center of our ellipse. And the absolute value, the distance, 2 times a, here's the a we're talking about, that is the denominator of the fraction, is the length of the horizontal axis, and the distance, 2 times the length of b, is the length of the vertical axis. And here is the procedure that we're going to go through in general for graphing any ellipse. First, we're going to put it in standard form. This is the standard form right here. This is the uh, center form, where we can recognize the center point HK, we can recognize A, we can recognize B, and with A and B you'll see that we'll be able to find the value of C, and then we can find all the other information, the foci, the major axis, the minor axis, all those things that are going to be important to us when we're graphing uh, an ellipse. So the very first thing we're going to do is put it in standard form. That's an x squared term and a y squared term set equal to 1. Then we're going to plot that center point hk. 
Then we're going to plot the endpoints of the horizontal axis by moving A units to the left and A units to the right from that center point. And again, this is the A that we're talking about. So we plot HK, we find the value of A, and we move A units to the right and A units to the left, and that's going to be the endpoints of our horizontal axis. The next step is to plot the endpoints of the vertical axis or the minor axis uh, by moving B units up and down from the center of our ellipse. Uh, I, I need to clarify that. Uh, this would only be the minor axis if A was larger than B. Uh, we could have a vertical axis that was a major axis. So we'll talk more about that when we do an actual example. Steps three and four locate the endpoints of the major and minor axes. Uh, the next step, we're going to connect the endpoints of the axes with a smooth curve that we're actually going to draw the ellipse. Then we're going to use the following formula to locate the foci. And this is where that distance C comes in play. And we also use A and B. So C squared is going to equal a squared minus b squared if a is larger than b. If a is larger than b, then that is what tells us that we have a horizontal major axis. If b is greater than a, that tells us we have a vertical major axis. So we're going to have to find the values of a and b and compare them accordingly. And then if a is larger than b, then we find the value of c, which we're going to need for locating our foci. We find c squared equals a squared minus b squared when a is larger than b or c squared equals b squared minus a squared if b is larger than a. And so again, we'll see that in an exact example. We're going to move c units to the left and to the right from the center of the major axis if it's horizontal. We'll be moving up or down if the major axis is vertical. Then we'll label the points uh, f sub 1 and f sub 2 for the two foci. And then we identify the length of the major and minor axes. We don't actually have to plot the foci in order to graph the ellipse, but we are going to get asked sometimes to just find the, the focus or the foci, or maybe we're going to be given the foci and we have to use that to actually find the center point. So here's an exact example. Here is an ellipse. We have the quantity x plus 2 squared over 25 plus the quantity y minus 3 squared over 16, and that's equal to 1. And so the first thing we need to do is put it in standard form or make sure it is in standard form. And it turns out that it is in standard form. That's the standard form. We can recognize h. We can recognize k. I see a squared. I see b squared. It's in the form that I need in order to get all the information I need to actually graph this ellipse. So I need to plot the center point HK. That's going to be negative 2, positive 3. So there's my center point. Then I'm going to plot the endpoints of the horizontal axis by moving A units to the left and A units to the right. So I need to recognize what A is. Well, 25 is A squared, so 5 is A. So if I'm moving to the left and to the right, I'm not going to affect my Y coordinate. That's only going to affect my x coordinate. So I need negative 2 plus 5 and negative 2 minus 5. So there are the endpoints of uh, my axis, my horizontal axis. Then I'm going to plot the endpoints of my vertical axis, so I need to identify b. Well, here's b squared, therefore b has to be 4. And my vertical axis is only going to affect my y-coordinate. Now my y-coordinate is 3, so I'm going to move 4 units up from 3 and 4 units down from 3, but it's not going to affect the x-coordinate of those points because we're moving vertically up and down. So the endpoints of the vertical axis are negative 2, 7, and negative 2, negative 1. Then I just connect those endpoints and I draw my ellipse, all of that information. So there's my horizontal axis, there's my vertical axis, there's my center point. I haven't found the foci yet. I don't really need it in order to graph the ellipse, but I could find it if I needed it. 
Uh, that's just a matter of finding C. Uh, and I know A and B, so I can find C anytime that I need to. It turns out that because A is bigger than B, then the major axis is a horizontal axis, and we can see that that is longer than the minor axis, which was the vertical axis. So which way is the major axis? We just answer that. It's horizontal because A is bigger than B. Uh, using the following formula, we can locate the foci. So c squared is going to be a squared minus b squared because a is bigger than b. So c squared is going to be 25 minus 16, or it's going to be 9, and therefore c is going to be plus or minus 3. So we can locate the foci, and we know that the focus, the both focus, both foci, I guess I should say, always lie on the major axis. So this is going to be a horizontal move from our x coordinate of negative 2. So we're going to we're going to go th 3 in the positive direction from negative 2 and 3 in the negative direction from negative 2. So the coordinates for the foci for this ellipse are negative 5 3 and 1 3. So there we are. There's everything that we need to know about this ellipse. So very quickly, um, we'll see if we can get through this second example here. Now here's one that's not given to us in standard form, so we need to take the steps to put it in standard form. Remember, I'm probably looking for a fraction plus a fraction equals 1. Well, this has to equal 1, so I'm going to divide every term by 144. When I divide every term by 144, I get x squared over 9 and y squared over 16 equals 1. So the center point I can see that h and k both have to be 0, so my center point is 0, 0. I have a equals 3 and b equals 4. This right here tells me that my major axis is going to be vertical and my minor axis is going to be horizontal. This is a case where b is greater than a. So the endpoints of the horizontal axis, I'm going to go from my center point, which is 0, and I'm going to go to the right, 3, and to the left, 3. If I want to plot the endpoints of the vertical axis, I'm going to go from my k value of 0, and I'm going to go up 4 and down 4. Then I'm going to connect the endpoints of the axis with a smooth curve. I'm going to actually draw the ellipse. Uh, which way is the major axis? We just said because B is larger than A, we know that we have a vertical major axis. We can locate the foci by moving up or down a distance of C from that K value. It's not going to affect our X coordinate, only our Y coordinate. So we need to take the steps to locate the value of C. So we're going to go up from 0 along the Y axis, positive root 7, and then down negative root 7. So there it is. There's the second graph. Very easy. And we can see we do have a vertical major axis and a horizontal minor axis. So here's one where it says we need to put it in standard form. It is in uh, equation form. And so we're going to have to do kind of what we did on the circle. We're going to have to complete the square. So we want to gather the terms together. We want to add what we need to on the left-hand side to have complete squares, and then we have to make sure that we're doing the same thing on the right-hand side. One thing I would caution you about, now that we have factored this 4 out, when I take half of b and square it, I'm not just adding this value on the left-hand side, I'm adding 4 times that value. Plus, I'm going to be adding 9 times this value. So I have to make sure that I add over here on the right-hand side the, the right numbers so that I do have a, a complete equal sign here. So you can see I'm adding 4 times 4 and I'm adding 9 times 9. So there it is and I'm going to divide both sides or every term by 36 so I need it equal to 1 and so there we are. a squared is 9, b squared is 4, h is negative 2, k is 3, and I'll just get through this really quickly because we're about out of time. There's the center point, the end points of the horizontal axis. A is larger than B, so I'm going to move to the right and to the left on the horizontal axis. 
uh, the endpoints of the vertical axis, B is 2, connect the endpoints, draw it. I know my major axis is horizontal because A is larger than B. I locate the foci by finding the value of C, and the foci are along the major axis, so I start at negative 2, I'm going to add root 5, I'm going to subtract root 5, and those are going to be my foci. So there we go. There's three examples on how to uh, graph ellipses. Come to class next time and we'll give it some practice.